No lockouts here. Labor peace continues in the ECHL. A shootout goal that turns some heads. After 25 years, a league milestone is achieved. And the most famous bird in the world? It just might be. And now you'll get to see it on ECHL Week. Welcome to ECHL Week. The folks responsible for operating the ECHL have ensured that they won't be imitating the NHL when it comes to labor issues. That's because the Professional Hockey Players Association and the ECHL have ratified a five-year collective bargaining agreement. The terms of the CBA have been okayed by both the ECHL's Board of Governors and a vast majority of ECHL players and will run for five years starting in July. The extension includes increases in financial areas while enhancing off-ice benefits including dental care and support to assist players in preparing for their lives after hockey. I think there was an understanding, I think uh, this, not just in this negotiation but probably going back to the previous two negotiations as well, um, a better appreciation of where the other, the other side is coming from, what the important issues are to uh, from our perspective for the players and from the players' perspective, again, trying to understand better where the owners are coming from. So I think going into the discussions, there's been um, a lot more, uh, um, uh, I, I guess, single-minded approach from both parties to say, um, let's do something that's fair, but at the same time, um, uh, you know, we're in this together. And if we want to make sure that we continue to uh, have a, a viable league and continue to grow the sport at the AA level, you know, we've got to do that uh, together as opposed to, uh, you know, trying to fight one another. We feel this agreement will serve to be the start of sustained stability at the AA level of our storied sport, said Larry Landon, executive director of the PHPA. It protects gains made throughout the years, provides enhancements for players and their families, and provides cost certainty, positioning the league for possible future expansion. Commissioner McKenna also addressed the prospect of future growth with respect to this agreement. Traditionally, we've done a, yeah, uh, probably a three-year uh, extension. I think we had one four-year, but uh, this one's being five is, a, is, a, is the longest term I think we've, we've had. So I think it allows us now for our existing owners or potential um, you know, expansion markets uh, that they would be able to take a look at it and say, okay, we've got a long-term um, uh, collective bargaining agreement in place with our players, uh, which is a, a substantial uh, you know, chunk of the, uh, the operating budget. Um, and by knowing what that's going to be or what the, uh, you know, the cost will be for the next five years, I think certainly it helps from, uh, from that perspective and does allow us to take a, more of a strategic uh, look at where we want to be growth-wise and uh, uh, be able to uh, talk with some confidence from uh, potential owners in terms of uh, you know, what they can be looking at for the future. Cincinnati's Brian Foster became the 11th goaltender in ECHL history to score a goal when he was the last Cyclone to touch the puck prior to it going into an empty net on a delayed penalty in a game against Trenton. Let's take a look while Nick Brunker describes the action on the Cyclones radio network. So the Titans break in and send a blast on save and a Foster denial is going to jar that puck out to the line once more. Bombeck feeds it to Bayer but he couldn't hold the zone. And so the defender for Trenton will have to back off, and a delayed penalty against Trevor Lewis is going to be whistled the minute the Cyclones can touch the puck. Drew Whiskey wrists it back up the far boards, but another miscue at the Cincinnati line. will let that puck go all the way down, and he scores! A miscue on the far side! Ricochets all the way down and in to the vacated net! Cincinnati leads it one nothing with 29.8 seconds to go. Watch Foster make the save off this shot from the point. 
you'll note that no other Cincinnati player touches the puck again prior to the goal. Foster, a former University of New Hampshire star, is the first goalie to be credited with a goal since Bakersfield's Timo Peelmeyer did it in December of 2009. Current NHL goalies who had a goal during their time in the ECHL are Phoenix Coyotes keeper Mike Smith, who scored for Lexington in 2002, and LA Kings goalie John Quick, who scored for Reading in 2007. The Las Vegas Wranglers are on a roll. Defending Western Conference champs started the season slowly, but recently things have fallen into place. On the 17th of February, the Wranglers had a nine-game winning streak stopped. Las Vegas has improved to a solid fifth place standing in the conference and certainly could move higher. I spoke with Wranglers coach Ryan Mujanel recently, and we covered several topics, including the advantages of being one of the few teams in the ECHL without an affiliation with the NHL club. Well, I think players are bright enough now, especially uh, players, and, and I think our league is, is really about that. I was just telling a story about Corey Conacher uh, uh, this morning that he was a player that came out of school and I didn't want. And, uh, you know, he's doing extremely well in the NHL. And that, that's really what the ECHL is about, is finding those players. And when you have an NHL affili affiliation, sometimes you're um, controlled a little bit too much by those NHL teams that, that I wouldn't say understand our level of play and maybe underestimate how good our league is. So I get a lot of players uh, based on not playing uh, behind contracts. I get a lot of players that are going to get an opportunity to play. And that's that's probably the advantage. The disadvantage is it's hard to recruit those top top end talent out of school and, and, and uh, junior uh, by not having that NHL affiliation. But um, for us, it worked out real well last year. I thought, uh, you know, I think we led uh, the ECHL and ECHL contracted players called up to the, uh, the American League and it's translated into, you know, a couple one-way American League deals, which is ultimately what it's about. Um, and we had success, so it's, it, it worked well, out well for us. This year it's a little bit different. We didn't get a lot of contracts from NHL teams or NHL players. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's how it goes. It works, works well for some teams. Some teams it doesn't work so well. Do you sense uh, when you're behind the bench in the middle of a game that uh, – that seems they're doing stuff different than we do out west. Yeah, it's a little bit. T I mean, we played one game and and it wasn't a great game. But I think um, the one thing I think about the East is it's probably a little bit younger. Uh, I'd say uh, the guys are probably a little bit more physical and more committed to to playing a, a physical game. Um, out west, I'd say the game's a little bit more like chess. Where here, it's probably a little bit like checkers. But then again, it's uh, I mean that's uh, kind of nitpicking. But um, it's tough to say. I know uh, we've had some really good programs uh, out west, like the Alaska Aces and the Colorado Eagles and, and teams like this that have uh, done a great job of, of building a program, and they haven't really deviated uh, from the type of play that they that they play. So it's a it's a reflection of the coaching out there. I think there's some really good coaches out there, and you know, in Stockton and Matt Thomas, you know, his team plays the same way all the time, and, and uh, they've had success. So um, yeah. I, Getting familiar with a team, that's a little bit tough here, but it's it's also a good thing uh, for our team as well. What about the challenges of player movement? It can't be easy to make personnel decisions based on what must be limited information. I think at, you know, at the ECHL level, we're not uh, afforded the luxury of having, you know, paid scouts or uh, I'm, I'm sure some teams do but um, a lot of the kids are refiltered through our recruiting uh, process so a lot of the kids a lot of us are familiar with but again like I the same kind of thing at the American League level I tell my players like it's it's usually one guy's opinion of a player and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right or wrong or or, uh, or you're never going to play or you're going to play um, it's not an exact science so uh, it is. It's a lot of guesswork. It's a lot of luck. And then on the other side of it, from the player's perspective, it's probably about opportunity. And that's what this league is about. It's about opportunity and, and making the most of your opportunity. And, and uh, we've had a lot of success by not trading players uh, in uh, Las Vegas. We've, you know, this was the first year that I actually made a trade player for player, uh, and it worked out real well for us. Um, but uh, it's one of those things. It's it's something that I don't believe in. I'd rather uh, spend the time and get guys better and and not create an atmosphere where guys feel like they're leaving every day. It's hard enough to play the game, uh, let alone thinking that you're on the wire. And so we've, um, you know, I'm real proud of the fact that we've we've done a good job in Las Vegas of, of creating an atmosphere where guys want to play. Getting into the playoffs is one thing, and, and doing something in the playoffs is something else. Any any thoughts in that regard? Right. Like I think last year put a lot of things into perspective of how things have to align, and I wouldn't say. 
Um, you know, the East Coast League playoffs are, are different. Uh, last year we started the playoffs with seven guys in the American League. This year it's going to be a lot different for teams because um, our seasons aren't in sync, obviously. If you're getting any players back from the American League, it's going to be in the conference final. So it's, it's, um, it's about timing. It's about getting your players back, and then the most important thing is the culture that you've you've created all year, and getting your players to play the right way when it comes time to play the right way. And and this is what from here on in is about for us. We're it's about dictating the play and playing the right way. Still ahead, a head turner of a shootout goal, a milestone achievement for the ECHL, and a very famous bird. All yet to come on ECHL Week. So many reasons to be a fan, so many ways to show it. Customize your own at shop.nhl.com. Of the four new teams in the ECHL this season, Evansville finds itself in the toughest spot to make the Kelly Cup playoffs with just six weeks left in the regular season. Gwinnett, on the other hand, has been locked in a battle with Greenville all season in the quest for a South Division title. Our featured game from the East this week looks at the Icemen during their recent visit to take on the Gladiators. Here to describe the action is Dustin Bixby on WDUN. Back to get it was Dale and he'll regroup in his own zone. Rink wide here to the near side, Harris. Harris will walk ahead. Turned off the wall, Harris, that's tap free. Gladiators down the wing. Here's Piero Zavitel into the slot. Walsh in, shot score! Walker the Gladiators, a one and nothing lead! So Walsh with the goal for the Gladiators, his first is a Gwinnett Gladiator. And Walsh gives the Gladiators the early lead here on the Iceman. Running along, Piero Zavitel over the line, looking for help off the back of Buharovic. Top of the left wing circle, He'll flip back into the corner. Chasing Piero Zabatel behind the net. Piero Zabatel centering feed. Weller fires. Score! Weller with the mark of the Gladiators. A 2 nothing lead. <laughs> Near side. It's cycled back behind the net. Iceman still moving with it. Robinson. Robinson. will Take it behind the net. Centering feed in front. They score. Evansville able to capitalize, and they now have cut the lead in half just 47 seconds into the period. It's dropped off in the corner now. Piero Zavitel at the half wall. High slot. Arnold, shot score. Arnold with the mark of the Gladiators. Take a 3-2 lead. Corner, Haddad gave it away. Lee, no rack at it. Buck back to the point. Krug shot safely into the near corner. Gladiators a little lackadaisical trying to get out of their own zone. He'll move it ahead. Haddad in over the line. Haddad high. That's score. Joey Haddad with the mark of the Gladiators. A 4-2 lead. Grant will get to the line and over. Dropped off. Buharovic. Shot score. Buharovic with the mark of the Gladiators. A 5-2 lead. It will be Bowers, Haddad. Gladiators win it. Donald backpedaling into his own zone. Rink wide to Aw. Aw, he'll take his time. Flip ahead in the neutral zone. Now Bowers in line. Set. Haddad hooked up. Shot score. Joey Haddad makes it 6 to 2. Clark near side. Clark tied up. Bouncing puck down the wing. A crossing was Arnold. Puck wide open. 
And now pushing and shoving in there. Scrimger comes in. Weller, Fanagi telling Weller to stay back at the top of the circle. Fanagi, and now there goes Fanagi as everybody gets into it. And now the linesmen have their hands tied up. In there was Baker. In there as well was Obermeyer as he was tied up. Weller, Fanagi trying to just grab a body and equalize things. Now Dale, top of the circle to the line. Krug through traffic, knocked down in front. Moving in, Della Robert off the leg of Weller and into the back of the net. And another power play goal for the Iceman with 148 left here in the third period. Lee will play it around the boards here to the near side. Iceman dig it off the wall. Now to the point with it. Tatro will work it across. Shot save. Lee, big rebound in front. They score. Iceman a 6-5 with 50 seconds now remaining here in the third. Seven seconds. Six seconds remain. Iceman, one last chance. Off the gates, back through center and over the line. And that will do it. Gladiator tonight over the Evansville Iceman by the score of 6-5. to five. At ECHL Week, we do our best to bring you the most entertaining and significant plays that take place throughout the league. With that in mind, we're happy to show you a recent game-winning shootout goal by Alaska's Tommy Mealy. Here's Josh Bogorod asking the Aces forward about one of the more impressive game winners of the year. Tommy, it was a, a big win. There were some highlight reel plays. You clinch a playoff spot, but all anybody wants to talk about is the fifth round of that shootout, that spin around move you pulled off. Take us through the play and when you decided you were going to pull that off and how you executed it. Uh, it was kind of like if, if, I, if I got a tap on the back, I knew I was going and I mean, I was going with it the whole time. Um, just something that kind of keep in the back of your mind. It's something that, you know, practice every day, just joking around. But, you know, sometimes you can catch a goalie by surprise. And I was lucky enough to, for that to happen last night. So You didn't break a smile until you got back to the bench. You almost did a Muhammad Ali pose, just standing at the top of the crease for about a second or two. You get back and then you crack the smile. Obviously, the guys had to be going crazy. And tell us what was going through your mind right after you buried that shot. Well, standing at the top of the crease, I was just surprised it went in. <laughs> uh, but no, it was just, um, like I said, it was just a spur of the moment thing. And I got back to the bench and Guys are jawing at me, so it felt good, but most importantly, it felt good to get the win. Up next, a former Alaska Aces forward makes ECHL history. And later, a look at the video of a big bird, which has already been seen over a million times. ECHL Week continues. From opening night until the Kelly Cup is raised, watch every game of the 2012-13 ECHL season exclusively on AmericaOneSports.com. Catch the action live or on demand. Games available on your PC, Mac, or mobile device. The biggest goals, hardest hits, and spectacular saves all season long can be found only at AmericaOneSports.com, the official broadband broadcaster to the ECHL. I'm a legend. I'm the player you want to be. I'm the name you'll wear on your jersey. I'm one of a kind. You'll see me everywhere. On the ice. Online. On the All-Star team. Take a good look. I'm the future. In its 25th year, the ECHL has sent its 500th player to the National Hockey League. Former Alaska Aces right wing Anthony Peluso made ECHL history on February the 12th when he made his debut for the Winnipeg Jets in a 3-2 home loss to Philadelphia. The 23-year-old had a shot on goal and four penalty minutes in about three minutes of ice time. I, I think it's important from several different uh, uh, points of view. Uh, from a player's point of view, I think it's a clear message to uh, you know the kids that are uh, in our league now or that might choose to uh, to play in our league in the future that there is an opportunity. 
uh, to uh, you know, move your way up from our league, use it as a, uh, a development ground. And I think also then from a uh, fan's point of view, uh, it, it, it also speaks to the quality of players uh, that we have in the league that uh, on an ongoing basis of any night they could be watching a game where at some point in the future some of those guys on the ice uh, are going to be playing at the highest level of our sport. Where does 500 players in the NHL, where does that rank? Well, it, it's part of the mix. Um, I mean, first and foremost, we want to make sure that uh, we're, we're running good operations in, in uh all the uh, the markets that we are, and making sure that we we do our best to uh, uh, put a, a quality entertainment product on the ice for our fans. And then I think from our, our uh, competitive point of view, uh, our owners, um, our, our coaches, our general managers, our fans want to make sure that uh, their team can remain competitive on an ongoing basis. And uh, you know, certainly, I think fans focus on the uh, individual rivalries they have with other teams, other leagues. And uh, they're more concerned, I think, uh, fans, uh, from a fan's point of view, probably more concerned with the overall structure of the team and how competitive they are as opposed to any individual player. It's good to have uh, the mix of players uh, developing and moving up, but also uh, quality players that uh, are in the community, uh, on the team on a longer-term basis, and uh, mixing in the right veterans and the right leaders so that... uh, you know, we continue to have some continuity from uh, year to year for our fans as well. Other former ECHL players who have recently made their NHL debuts were former Ontario Reign and Orlando Solar Bears goaltender Darcy Kemper, who tended the twine for the Minnesota Wild in a 2-1 loss to Vancouver. Kemper, 22, made 28 saves and took the loss. Also, former Charlotte Checkers, Wheeling Nailers, Pensacola Ice Pilots, Augusta Lynx, and Florida Everblades left wing Patrick Bordalo made his NHL debut with the Colorado Avalanche in a 4-2 loss to Minnesota. The 26-year-old had two shots on goal and was a plus one in about five minutes of ice time. In connection with the 500th player from the ECHL to make the NHL, ECHL Week had a contest to predict when that would happen. Many took their guesses, a few had the right date, February the 12th, and the winner of the ECHL prize pack was Devin Mahoney of West Valley City, Utah. For his proper prognostication, Devin earned an ECHL winter jacket, an all-star autographed pennant, an all-star computer bag, ECHL 25th anniversary hat, and a 25th anniversary polo shirt. Not surprisingly, the University of Utah freshman is a Grizzlies fan. I spoke with him on the phone and we talked about hockey. How did you start rooting for the Grizzlies? Um, started rooting for the Grizzlies. I went to my first game just a couple years ago, back in 2011. I've been going to games ever since. What about the experience of going to a game? What is it that uh, after you went to your first game kept kept you coming back for more? Just the fact that there isn't a bad seat in the building. They're all great seats. They've done okay so far, but uh, the playoffs get a little closer. How do you think they're going to do? I think they'll make it, but they've had some issues as far as problems with goalies getting injured and not having enough defense, but they've gotten by. I think, I think they'll make it first, maybe second round. Thanks to everyone who entered the contest. And by the way, those of you who follow our Facebook page received advance notice of this contest. We hope you'll visit our ECHL Week Facebook page and also hope you'll join in when we have our next contest. Wade McLeod of the AHL's Springfield Falcons is okay after suffering a seizure during a recent home game against Adirondack. McLeod, who was hit into the glass just before the seizure, is a second-year pro who's played five games with Evansville in the ECHL this season. He's since been released from hospital and is resting comfortably. Good stuff still ahead, including a serious Western Conference battle and a team that invited a real live replica of its team name to a game with very unexpected results. That's still ahead on ECHL Week.
So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Idaho Steelheads have clinched a Western Conference playoff spot. The Utah Grizzlies have some work to be done before they can make that same claim. Here are the two Mountain Division rivals squaring off in more ways than one at the Maverick Center. It's another game that goes right down to the wire, and Adrian Denny has the call for us on 1320 KFAN. We've got a fight. Nick Tuzzolino absolutely throttling Carrick, who can't get his balance, and Tuzzolino's letting him have it. Nick rips him along. Now comes back with a right. Carrick gets a right. Tuzzolino trying to keep it going as Carrick now trying to go up top. Throws away some equipment. Tuzzolino now has him in a headlock as Carrick is at a 90 degree angle. You know, still ripping him along as the linesman will step in. 255 into this first period. James Martin one hands it along. Martin. Along that left wing wall, throws it out in front, they score! Nine twenty left to go here in this first period as we've got another battle. Tommy Owen Scott Todd for the second time in three games. Maxwell digging in. Now he just one arms Todd down to the ice and lands on top of him! The linesman will step in and that'll be that. Evan Stoffa trying to push it along. Idaho still holds it in. Coyle to the far side. Robinson Dacus throws a left wing circle. One timer and a goal. The Steelheads tie things up at one. 38 seconds left to go on this power play. Dacus draws it. Drops it back. They score. Chase Coyle, a five-on-four power play goal for the Steelhead. 6.39 into this second period. Side to Tuzzolino. Grizzly set up. Right wing circle. Cameron. Basquiatti looking behind him. Now it's in. They score! Mark down low for Mitch Wall. To Tuzzolino. Back to Isherwood. Left wing circle. Back to the net. Vock. Here's Cameron, a backhander, and he scores! Schultz, again, winning a bet. The big guy motoring along. Schultz out in front. Backhander, a goal for Utah! The other way, Mitch Wall with Bach on center. Out in front. Colin tried to go to the far side. He just missed. As the Grizzlies got an odd man rush there. Now a turnover. Maxwell shot, save. Fox scores! Brent Robinson picks it up for Idaho. I thought they score. Coyle, high four game with 9.23 left to go in regulation. Idaho's come back with two quick ones. Draw back, controlled by Galen. One second left. It's deep down in the corner, and the Grizzlies win. The hockey folks in Bakersfield, California, refer to their area as Condor's Town. Now, millions around the world know that as well. The biggest online viral sensation of the season in the ECHL has turned out to be the Bakersfield Condor. Not a member of the team, but a real live Andean Condor that was brought to the ice as part of a promotional event during the national anthem of a recent game against Las Vegas. The plan was that the bird would sit on a custom perch at center ice during the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Queen Victoria, or Vicky to her friends, weighs about 30 pounds and has a 10-foot wingspan. But when her handler, Joe, the Birdman of Las Vegas, Crathwall, went to put her on her perch, Vicky had other ideas. 
She ultimately chased one of the team member Condors, Peter Boyd, down the hall to the Bakersfield locker room. The Condors broadcast team of Ryan Holt and Kevin Bartle add their commentary. Welcome back inside Rob Omeka Arena. The Condors and the Wranglers meeting for the seventh time on the season. We're laughing, but we shouldn't be laughing. We shouldn't be. The Condor is out running around at center ice. I love it. I love it. This is Condor's town. Uh, the, bird's going, the, the bird's going over to the Condor. The bird man bench. was bringing the bird out to put him at the perch. Look at the Condor's players are getting away for a hole. Look at them. They're, oh, there he goes up on the bench. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is the greatest. Oh, ever my seen. gosh. <laughs> the bird's going down. The he's down the door. tunnel. Bird, the bird's done. He's down the tunnel. He's going to the locker room. And that didn't exactly go as planned. Queen Victoria performs at zoos and other events. She was fine after this performance. Joe the Birdman, on the other hand, had a few bruised ribs. Vicki, who's back to her regular schedule, will be featured in a Natural Living History Museum in Nevada for the next two months before doing educational shows around the country this summer. Crazy shootouts, wild birds, and goalies scoring. Just another week in the ECHL. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to tell your friends about our program. Until next time, make it a good week. Make it an ECHL week.